Welcome to, back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and if this is your first time watching, uh, welcome to Contextual Electronics. This is going to be a slightly different video for Contextual Electronics. So if you don't know what it is, it's actually a 10-week program for learning all about how to design and lay out and build hardware from scratch uh, alongside a community of others looking to do the same. And it's led by me, Chris Gamble. Uh, you know, we go through, we actually build hardware all together, and you get to see all the design decisions that go into it and participate alongside me and your peers. So let's uh, let's get started. Today we're actually going to be talking about Circuit Hub, which is a tool which I really like, and I think it's going to be a great resource to uh, people using uh, using contextual electronics or taking the course. And I really wanted to be able to, you know, share it with all of you once we got through some of the basics. And so for reference, let's quickly look at the KiCad course outline. This is actually for contextual electronics. Uh, this is a lot of the courses that exist teaching people how to use KiCad. And I want to stress here, if you haven't looked at it, you should definitely be uh, trying to, you should definitely first learn how to build schematic symbols through KiCad and then also footprints through KiCad. Both of these things are very, very important to learn before you use any kind of outside tools. Once you have learned that stuff though, I think Circuit Hub's a great way to, you know, speed up your design flow and start making parts quicker, uh, you know, getting your boards out quicker and being able to share components with others. That's, that's all the things that I really like about it. So once you log into Circuit Hub, uh, so first off, when you type circuithub.com into your address bar, it's actually going to ask you to sync up to your Dropbox account. And uh, that is something that I've already done. Uh, the location here is actually, so if you have a Dropbox account, I'm on Windows 7. If you go into uh, Dropbox, your documents here, if you go into Dropbox, uh, Apps, and then Circuit Hub, Parts, you can actually see it. these are all the different uh, files, or CAD programs it supports. We're obviously using KiCad here, and once you go through the the Circuit Hub interface, you actually see that one uh, picking one part actually updates all of these different libraries, and so that's nice because you don't have to worry about you know picking the right one and you know keeping them consistent. If you even if you wanted to switch between you know uh, Eagle and KiCad and OrCAD and all and, and Altium Designer, um, all of these things are very easy to switch between and that's really one of the benefits of of circuit hub so let's get started here the first thing we do is we type in a part that we want to look for and so let's start simple with one that a lot of people know at mega 328 real simple what it's going to do is actually going to go out and search octopart which is a, a search engine of distributor sites and finding out more about parts we see here that this is a this is actually the dip version. You can see all the different fields it categorizes by microcontroller. This is the vendor Atmel. This is the actual official part number, and then this is a description of it. So if we click on this, we actually see that all the attributes from Octopart come up. Uh, you know the package type, number of pins, and then if there were other things here, if they if they're listed in Octopart, they will show up here too, which is nice. So uh, we know the part, and now we're going to actually get to the part of Circuit Hub that's a little bit, a little bit uh, wonky at first, but once you get used to it, you really start to like it. So we see Circuit Hub actually allows you to split your browser window, and that's nice because you can do things like while you're looking at your parameters over here, attributes, you can actually be looking at data sheets on the left side. Same thing if you're doing a footprint on the right and you wanted to have a cross-reference, uh, or sorry, symbol on the right, you want to have a cross-reference of the different uh, pinouts and everything, we can do that. So this is actually uh, a part that already has a component listed for it. And a component being listed as a combination of schematic symbol, footprint, and then optionally a 3D body, which is used when you're actually, uh, if you want to create a 3D rendering of your of your comp of your final board that you can then output to a uh, CAD program for sizing and everything. In this case, though, we actually see that uh, Melissa, one of the the uh, Circuit Hub people, actually created a component. All three of these, or two of these things, tied together, and that's great because since this already exists, we can just simply save it to our library, and that will sync it through Dropbox like we already hooked up. 
So quickly though, let's look at the uh, the different things you have here. So there's the schematic symbol, then there's footprints. We can actually select different footprints if you wanted to. These are just uh, different versions of a narrow dip, it looks like. Bodies, we can see that uh, this one doesn't have a body listed. If we search for dip on here, we see uh, there's because there actually isn't a 28 pin dip as this part is associated as. And then finally, activities is just the the status on on these specific parts that you can you can follow as as people in the community start to start to act on these things because it is a community driven thing is you know if you, someone else creates a component as Melissa did then I'm able to save it to my library and it'll actually download through uh, Dropbox uh, so right now it is syncing through Dropbox sometimes this takes a little while uh, I think because of the API on Dropbox's side oh actually if we pull this over here we see it actually did update this is my Windows taskbar obviously but if you watch your Dropbox it actually did up, update in the background alright uh, so this is all we need to do for Circuit Hub this component actually now exists in uh, in my part library alright so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, just minimize that window we'll open up the KiCad launcher which people in contextual electronics course will be very familiar with uh, we're actually open EE schema which is schematic editor and this is just a blank project that I've been using to launch a lot of different uh, tutorials here what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, we've I've already added the library here if we go into preferences library we can see that the Dropbox folder was already added this is actually the search path and then we see circuit hub library already exists here uh, so what we can do is we can just hit the A key list all which should show all of the libraries double click on the circuit hub library and then we see these are all the parts that I've had synced through Dropbox so we'll select that one which is the one we we saw before 791 is the component name in drop in uh, circuit hub sorry and then we see this is actually the schematic symbol that we saw on there which is great so if we want to actually pull this into the schema uh, the layout program what we do is we we can save this real quick save the netlist it's going to ask us to annotate the component because we didn't already do that save that netlist annotate components and these are all things that you can learn if you're we'll go through all of these different things in the KiCad parts of contextual electronics so be sure to sign up for that if you haven't already alright so we have the netlist saved we can close this out save and exit we'll open up EE schema or sorry PCB new when we load the netlist well first let's make sure that the library is hooked up we can see here this is the folder where it exists at and then circuit hub is the uh, is the footprints library we need to have both the schematic library and the footprints library hooked up in order to uh, actually have it find the right components and correct uh, footprints Oops. so it asks us to save the project so now if we read the netlist it should say oh there was an at mega in the design you need to pull that into your footprints now hit read the netlist we see and there it is look at that all right, and we can place this component. We can move it around, or rotate it. All these usual KiCad things, and then these are all synced together. So if we actually went and changed some of the pinouts or something on Circuit Hub, it actually once we refresh this, we should be able to refresh the footprint and everything, and it should be good to go as well. All right, so let's close this out real quick, and then let's look at another example very quickly, just of the, you know, another reason to use. Uh, to use circuit hub is not just for you know everyday components but actually for the difficult components here so if we go into circuit hub we can find there's actually this is a, a Xilinx uh, Spartan 6 and we see this is it looks like a pretty simple schematic symbol here but this is actually UA this is actually one of seven footprint or schematic symbols rather so if we go to unit we can actually see there's a whole bunch of different schematic symbols here we can get a hint at what kind of package it is it's actually 144 pin uh, TSOP or sorry TQFP and so what we can do is, is once again save save the netlist annotate the schematic just the usual things from KiCad close this We've got the netlist saved save the project open PCB new and then now we can read the netlist again and we should have TQFP part which we do and this is really great for these high density components you know TQFPs uh, ball grid array type stuff BGAs all of these things are really really good so uh, 
really enjoy Circuit Hub. I think it's great for maintaining parts and sharing amongst friends. So I highly recommend you check it out. Thank you for watching and go over to contextualelectronics.com, check out more KaiKed videos and sign up for the session starting in October of 2013.